Hey guys, it's me. Um, <clears throat> you might notice the background. I've been here before. Yes, it's my bathroom. I have a tiny little Superman and his two superhero big sisters racing around my living room. Um, I'm not sure what they're saving, but they're saving someone. So I've just gotten out of their way and I'm in my bathroom where it's quiet. Um, I wanted to share with you something that has been a burden on my heart for the last year. And yesterday something was brought to my attention that um, that pushed me to want to share this burden with the rest of you. There was a website that was shared on a Facebook group that I'm in. And the website was a pro-choice website. Um, beyond a website, though, it was a movement. They had a hashtag, they have a site, they have celebrities backing it. And it's gaining traction. I'm not going to share the name of it because I don't think it needs any more publicity than it already has. Uh, and this video isn't about the pro-choice, pro-life thing anyway. Um, it just, uh, this website, though, was such a horrifying display of wickedness being celebrated. It wasn't just Wicked. It was the celebration of wicked. It was the elevation of murder onto a pedestal to be praised. And um, I think that's what made this site the most disturbing to me, was was the, the worship and the praise that it was receiving for for evil. Um, obviously, in this case, it was murder because it's, it's abortion. Uh, that would be the evil there. But at any rate, it's it's evil, and um, I think a lot of us here in the Western world are starting to feel like this wickedness is ramping up. And of course, it's always it's always been there. We don't wage war against people, but against powers and principalities. We know that much. But um, something's changing, and I think and I think we all feel that. You look around the globe and there's persecution of Christians and uh, we're seeing it. We're seeing it here reach into Canada and the United States in, in different ways perhaps than, than what they're seeing in other parts of the world. But nevertheless, there is, there is this um, battle that I think many of us are feeling in our spirits. And so I wanted to share with you this this. Um, this thing that God has put into my heart. Uh, in Joshua chapter 24, this is the very last church, uh, chapter in Joshua, the Israelites have taken the promised land and Joshua calls them together and he challenged them, challenges them and he says, uh, verse 14, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if it is evil in your eyes to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve whether the gods your fathers served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joshua makes a really bold statement there. He says, pick one. You're going to choose the gods over here or you're going to choose the Lord. But pick one and be committed to that one. And the people respond with, yeah, of course, we're, we're going to love the Lord. But he challenges them again and he presses them hard to know who it is they're committing themselves to. And so we find ourselves in this position today where we see um, and we, we're feeling these, these trials ramp up. And so my call to you today is choose today. Which, which gods are you going to serve? The gods of this world or the Lord? And I think it's important that before we get to a point where we are individually pressed and pushed in that department, we need to make a commitment. Before we get there, we need those commitments in place so that when we face a trial, we already know where we stand and we know what we're committed to. And as a mother, there's one extra verse in here that sticks out to me. Um, it's further down in verse 30, word 31. Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua and had known all the work that the Lord did for Israel. This was the next generation of people, the younger generation, the people younger than Joshua still served the Lord because of that commitment that they had made. And I have kids and as a parent, it's really important to me that um, as parents, we make that commitment. Are we going to stand firm? Are we going to um, take our next generation 
and do our best to um, walk it out as a witness to them, but also to help get their hands into the hands of Jesus. And um, I just feel like as this, as these trials are, are ramping up, we need to make that commitment. And um, that's very much what's burning in my heart. And that's what I wanted to share today was if you call yourself a son or a daughter of God, would you today take a knee or or sit in prayer and commit commit your life to God and say, whatever trial comes, I'm in. I'm in with you, God. I will take a stand on this. And maybe that means we're going to have to speak up and lose friends or um, lose relationships. Or maybe that means we're going to lose jobs. Or maybe, maybe we'll be fortunate and nothing will happen. But that commitment part is what's important. And, and um, what we need to be doing today before that trial is upon us. And we need to be doing it not only for us, but we need to be doing it for that next generation. Whether you're a parent or a grandparent or you don't have any kids at all, if you belong to a church, you have impact on that younger generation. And it's up to you to walk out your faith as a witness to them and to be an encouragement to them and to be the Barnabases to them to call them alongside to grow and to put their hands into God so that we don't lose this next generation to, um, to the evilness that's happening that's in this world. Um, the evilness has always been there. Uh, it's not going away until the end of the world is done. It's there. So we just need to be willing to commit, to be all in. So um, that's my encouragement to you today. Uh, would you just spend some time in prayer and make those make those commitments and if you can do it with a friend or a spouse or a family member and do it with them to hold each other accountable to say you know what yeah we've made this commitment and um, we want to dedicate our lives we want to dedicate our lives to um, to to God to the Lord as for me and my house we will serve the Lord um, will you and your house also serve the Lord all right take care guys